So on test day, the examiner will probably t more than likely tell you, wait till I get in the truck and he'll climb in and sit down and put his seatbelt on. He wants to see if you're going to use three points of contact as you enter or exit the vehicle at any time. Um, as long as you're showing him that you use three points of contact, you're fine. You don't need to really mention it. So the first order of business I'm going to tell you is your seatbelt. If you don't, you will fail your test. So my seatbelt secure, not ripped on or cut, and it should latch properly. If you feel like you need to adjust your seat at this time, uh, do so. If it doesn't have enough air pressure, then you have to wait until you build up your air pressure to start your vehicle. Um, I tell everybody to use the three S's. Seatbelt was the first order of business. Uh, my safety equipment is the second S. So I would check for my fire extinguisher to make sure it's fully charged, it's secure, and with the safety pin in place. Uh, it's not by my door, so it's in the service door of my vehicle. I also would check my spare fuses uh, and three red reflective triangles. They're also located in my storage compartment. Um, then I'll do my third S, which is a safe start. So what is a safe start? I want to make sure my vehicle is in neutral and both brakes are set. So then I want to do one click to the right with the key, let the gauges sweep, ABS lights should come on and go off. If it stays on longer than three to five seconds, there's an issue with the ABS. In this case, my trailer ABS light is staying on. That means there's currently a situation with my ABS, my anti-lock brake system. All right, so now I will start the vehicle. Um, I'm gonna turn my lights on. And uh, I'm gonna start in front of me. I would check my windshield the same way I did when I was outside the vehicle. Secure, not cracked, damage, or broken, no illegal service to block my view. My windshield wiper blades and arms and wiper fluid are all working properly. Filled to the proper level. I'm gonna turn them off. Um, lights. So my high beam indicator is working, the blue light, low beam, left indicator is working properly, my right indicator is working properly, my four ways is working properly. Turn them off. Um, gauges, I'm going to sweep left to right, so I'm bundling everything together. Um, I don't want to bounce around. So my oil pressure gauge is rising to the normal operating range as the engine warms. Um, both my tachometer and speedometer worked on my last trip. My, I have enough fuel and depth for my trip. Then my voltmeter is the only one that's digital. Should be re reading between 12 and 14 volts. That means my alternator is charging properly. Then my air pressure gauges, I have the white needle and the blue needle, that's for primary and secondary air gauges. The blue is for secondary, the white is for primary. Um, it's rising to the normal operating range. Um, as I'm doing my in-cab inspection, I should have heard the sneeze, that's my governor, out under the engine compartment, cutting off, letting me know that my air system is fully charged, between 120 and 140 PSI. Then my water temperature gauge is rising to the normal operating range as the engine warms. <clears throat> um, I'm gonna check my heat and defrost. Switch that to heat, switch it to defrost. Wait for it to switch over, wave your hand. Then switch it back to, <coughs> excuse me, um, heat. Wait for it to switch over, you would turn the air conditioning off. Um, like that. Yep, it's working. Turn the air conditioning back on because it's 180 degrees outside. Um, my steering wheel is, uh, I'm gonna leave, leave that on because it's hot. Yeah. Uh, my steering wheel is 20 inches round. I uh, should have no more than two inches of free play while the engine is idling. And uh, check my 
door mirrors, make sure they're secure, not cracked, damaged, or broken. They're clean and visible, and they're adjusted for me. So at this time, I, I make sure that they were actually adjusted for me. I want to see the fourth axle and the West Coast mirror. I should see my drive axles and the convex mirror. Okay. And uh, do the other one real quick. All right. And then I'll check my city horn and air horn to make sure they're working properly. Just scan everything, make sure you got it, and uh, wait for further instructions. The examiner will say to me, okay, we're going to move on to the air brake uh, portion of the test because my air system is fully charged. I can now properly do an air brake test. So I'm going to do the air leakage test. So what I have to do, I would have mentioned to the examiner, I would, would have put the wheel chalk out and placed it either in front of or behind the tire. That way when I release my valves, the vehicle doesn't roll. If the vehicle rolls, you automatically fill your test. So at this time, I'm going to turn the vehicle off. I'm going to do one click to the right, let, let your gauges sweep, and then I'm going to release both valves, wait for the initial air loss, after the air loss I'm going to apply firm pressure to the service brake and the needle will move and then stabilize again. <clears throat> Once it stops, time yourself, you should not lose more than 4 psi in this minute starting now. You can use a turn signal as a timer if you like, two clicks is one second. He may say to you, okay, I saw you wait and, and do the one minute uh, air leakage test. Go ahead to the next step, no problem. So the next step of my test would be, I'm gonna do my pump down, I'm gonna pump my air brakes down, around 60 PSI, my low air warning and buzzer should come on. Okay, the low air warning and buzzer came on. Now I'm going to continue pumping my brakes down around 40 and 20 PSI, at which time both valves should pop out. Okay, so they both popped out. Both brakes are working. That's my emergency braking system. It's working properly. So now I have to do my second safe start. So I will turn the engine off to reset the computer. One click back to the right. Let my gauges sweep. See, I know I could do my safe start because my brakes are set and I'm in neutral. Then I start my vehicle. Now I have to do my air build up. So, see, I worked my way up and then I worked my way down. Now I got to work my way back up again on my gauges. So, I'm going to assist. I'm going to rev it up the RPMs to about 12 to 1500. Here's my tachometer hanging around 12 to 1500 and what I'm doing is it's called assisting I'm building up the air pressure faster so I want my air pressure to build up to where the warning low air warning and buzzer goes off around 60 psi and it did now I'm going to continue building my air pressure assisting up until 85 psi which is a quarter inch left of 100 when both needles are at that point, I will let off the accelerator. Okay, so now from 85 to 100 PSI, it should take me no longer than 45 seconds unassisted. You see, it has to do it on its own with no assistance. Okay, and now at 100 PSI, I'm going to continue assisting between 12 and 1500 RPMs. And once I hear the governor sneeze, I'll hear the governor cut out, that'll let me know my air system is properly charged between 120 and 140 PSI, which is also known as the normal operating range. And there's a range of 120 to 140 PSI because of the tractor and the length of the trailer. There's my governor, it just sneezed, let me know my air system is fully charged between 120 and 140 PSI. 
Now I'm going to continue with my air brake test. <clears throat> I'm going to perform my tug test. At this point, I would make sure that I would get out and remove the wheel chock outside the vehicle and then climb back in using three points of contact and put my seatbelt back on and close the door. Then, after I do that, I'm going to put my vehicle into drive. I have my foot on the brake. I'm going to release my parking brake, wait for the air loss. When I put my foot on the brake, I'm just hovering so I don't roll. All right, so now I'm going to give a little bit of gas. I'm going to see the hood slightly raise, and the vehicle should not move. And it didn't. So now I will set my parking brake, release my trailer brake, testing my parking brake. Put it back in drive, give a little bit of gas, and the vehicle should not move. And it didn't. So now I've got one in and one out. All I have to do now, well, push, push one valve in and pull forward um, at five miles per hour. I'm going to then come to a complete stop with both hands on the wheel and see if my vehicle pulls to the left or to the right. Check my mirrors, make sure there's nobody around. Then I will pull forward. vehicle did not pull to the left or to the right that would have indicated a problem with tires brakes suspension or not even load so I will then set my brakes put it in neutral and relax my foot and wait for further instructions and then that actually concludes your pre-trip and air brake test thanks for listening